Something you want me to say. Now. Information is power, and we, the Federal Black Collective, consider ourselves a powerful vehicle of providing factual and relevant information to the public. We keep you up to date with education, youth, city policy, and politics, as well as current and relevant events that happen daily. We are sponsored by Rugged Genius, EvanCook.com, Pretty Grind Entertainment, Positive Vibes, located in the Commons Mall. Welcome back to the Federal Way Black Collective weekly live stream show, Thursday Thoughts. Welcome to Thursday Thoughts. I am Lindsay Foster, and with me is my amazing person that I do this with every Thursday. You introduce yourself, Miss Lynn. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? It's so yeah. crazy. We're such good friends, and we don't even get to see each other. I miss yeah, I Except for on Thursdays. And so today we're going to talk about Black women and self-care. And so I have this amazing woman who was um, at our healing event and she introduced me. Her name is Emily. And she's actually um, an, an amazing spirit. And I feel like she, for me, she's an amazing healer. And um, she did this research paper um, uh, for her master's. And she was talking about black women and stress and, and what that looks like. And so I wanted to bring her back and, and kind of have that conversation today about black women and self-care. So I appreciate everyone bearing with us. We're running late tonight, you know, giving us grace. And so we're not gonna stress because that would defeat the purpose of self-care and black women. So I'm gonna um, ask Emily to introduce herself and kind of just give us some context to, to our conversation tonight, and then we'll kind of go from there. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lynn and Lindsay, for having me. I am excited to join the Federal Way Black Collective. I know you all are doing some amazing work in the world, and it is a gift to be here tonight. Um, and thank you for a generous introduction, Lindsay. That is very kind, and I appreciate how you see me in the world. I um, recently completed a master's degree in mind-body medicine with a, a specialization in wellness coaching. And I guess I consider myself a wellness and health 
equity advocate, if you had to put a, a term on it. And um, I come to this work from a legacy of two parents that were part of the healthcare industry. My father was a physician and my mom was a pharmacist. And so I grew up kind of in that world of for-profit wellness. And um, like any child who has parents in one world, you go the opposite way. And so I am I'm intrigued by the mind-body-spirit connection and driven by the question of who gets access to wellness and health, because it's definitely, as we know, as we've seen over the last eight months with COVID, it's, it's not equitable. Um, and right now I'm in the midst of pursuing my PhD in mind-body medicine, so the work continues. That's kind of where we're starting, I guess. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, probably two to three more years. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Hey, doctor. Yeah. I'm going to call you doctor, just speaking that into existence. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and hope, you know, it's not hopefully. So when I watch you, this hopefully this time get to walk across the stage with a cap <laughs> and a gown and your little neck thing. Or I don't know if that's a doctorate. I don't remember. But I, I really am excited for you. I think one thing that, um, I remember about your presentation was is that I, I, that you were able to talk about the stress in in Black women and you know the physical effects like diabetes and um, obesity and certain things like that. Um, mm -hmm. I would love for you to touch on that um, yeah, because absolutely. I think it's really important for us to understand what that 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 process looks like within our own bodies. Yeah, absolutely. So. There is no question there's a lot of research that shows how racism and discrimination affects people's health. That's, that is just a fact. We cannot, we don't, we don't need to argue about that. It is reality. It takes a toll. Um, it, the, there are a couple of frameworks that they talk about allostatic static load, meaning um, when you're stressed, your body kind of goes into that fight or flight mode, right? And so it's good occasionally it pushes you there's good stress it pushes you forward it helps you survive um, but when you face that on a daily basis um, there's another word that they use weathering right we know that weather rain it wears down things right so just like a stone a rock can become smooth with you know lots and lots of roughness beating up against it our bodies are broken down by relentless stress and um, as one example, if uh, a woman experiences occasional experiences of discrimination and racism, she is 16% more likely to get diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. if, she if she experiences everyday well, wait, racism. Emily, are you telling me that simply <laughs> like by waking up in the morning, I like, like no matter what I eat, the, my percentages are increased? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why the Black community has been so impacted by COVID, right? Because your stress levels are higher. And so your immune system is suppressed. And, and that means that you're more likely to get even a common cold, right? And if you experience it every day, uh, the research that I read said 31% likelihood of getting diabetes. That was one statistic that I came across that just kind of blew my mind. And you're twice as likely to die from it than our white counterparts and, and more likely to experience greater symptoms. So more likely to lose sight, more likely to lose limbs, more likely to experience neuropathy, all those kind of things related to diabetes. And I speak a lot about diabetes because I did a lot of research around that, but, but absolutely, yeah, stress, everyday stress takes its toll. And so then the question becomes, what do we do with this lack of access, right? Because we know some people don't get access to adequate healthcare. And even if you do go to the doctor, do they take you seriously? Do they listen to your concerns? Will your insurance cover everything that you really need to get healthy again, right? So there's this whole systemic experience that doesn't support wellness, right? Which is very depressing. It's not uplifting, right? Like this is not, so, so what do we, you know, how do we, how do we change that for ourselves, right? Is really the question that comes to mind. And one of the challenges that, that we have to look at is the historical placement of black women in this country. 
right? So black women's bodies have been in servitude, have been in service from mm -hmm. the time that they came, right? Were brought here, you know? And right. so, so there were survival techniques that were developed. They often call it like the superwoman schema or, or um, strong black woman, right? Like these myths that are embodied out of survival, right? You have to be independent. You have to do this on your own. It's all about the grind and the hustle, right? You don't ask for help. You don't need help, right? You don't, I never saw my mom cry, right? All these things that, that support this idea of a strong black woman, resistance to being vulnerable or, or saying, hey, I really need some help or this determination to su succeed at all costs, no matter the lack of resources, right? That, that pushing is everyday mm -hmm. stress, right? Um, and it's, it's not all bad, right? We know that black women bring community together, right? We know that, that that strength has supported families and communities and kept people together. So it's not all bad. It's just, how do we figure out how to do it in a healthy way? <laughs> mm. And what a big question. <laughs> mm. Wow. Okay, you must have like girl, a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you get, I mean, I'm really passionate about it because I look around and I'm like, I I don't want people I love dying because early, because this relentless stress. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not okay. That is absolutely and anybody who's okay with this stuff, these statistics that say that, that you're more likely to get cancer, high blood pressure, experience more pain in your body, right? Cancer, diabetes, all of these, these chronic illnesses, that's not okay. I think one of the reasons why I wanted to have this conversation and it was so important is the past two weeks, um, two, about two, actually it's been about three months, to be, let's be really honest, is I've been, I have a thing called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And then like the other medical term is pseudo, pseudo tumor cerebri, which my body reacts like I, my, I have a tumor. And um, I went to the eye doctor and he was like, yo, you're, you're hemorrhaging behind your eyes. And I was like, yo, that's not great. And then um, it was, you know, I was losing sight in one of my eyes and I, my whole body was swollen. And at one point um, I remember, um, you know, a friend of mine asking is, is, is working and doing all of these things worth it? And I was like, no, but then what, what does it look like for self-care? Because when we talk about self-care, it's, um, it's, oh, you know, you just relax, you go get a massage, you get your, you know, your nails and your feet done or your hair done. But self-care is so important and so, so different for everyone. Even those, those sound nice. There, there has to be daily things that we do for self-care. And, and so that's why I wanted to bring this conversation because we as black women go through so much, but we, who do we take care of first? Cause it's not us. It, it's going to be the community. It's going to be, you know, our kids, our husbands or whatever that looks like. So this is why this conversation is so important is because we need to start talking about self-care, especially for black women. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're, you're right. You know, the, they, they talk about social determinants of health a lot, which is, you know, what is your environment? Like what is, your community, your education, the, the, your economic stability, all of that equals privileged access to health, mm -hmm. right? And if you don't have that, where do you start? And so I, I always wanna be conscious that I don't want to minimize someone's life experiences, right? We have to acknowledge reality, but we also have to figure out, like you said, Lindsay, um, where do we start, right? It could be as simple as breath, right? The power of just breathing slows down that, that uh, fight or flight response. Just, just a few deep breaths. Maybe that's all you get in the morning, right? But it's something to calm that. I think of it as this inner flame, right? This fire that is within us that is burning and raging out of control. And you ask, you know, how do we start? Well, part of it is just awareness like paying attention to what is going on in your body. Um, one of the, the strengths that Black women have is our intuitiveness, 
right? Calling on that and trusting it. How often do people say, man, if I had just listened to myself, I knew I shouldn't have done that, right? Mm -hmm. And what about taking a pause before you say, yes, I'll take one, I'll take a six job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll show up and do that, right? Instead of saying that, why don't we check in with not just our calendars, but our bodies and say, do I have the capacity? And part of that as the strength I think that Black women have is sisterhood and community, right? Why don't we give each other grace to say no, right? Mm. When, when you call and say, hey, do you have the capacity to hear what a horrible day I had? Mm -hmm. And respecting if somebody says, you know what? I, I really don't, <laughs> I love you, but no. <laughs> and what is, so what does that look like to create some generosity and some, some space? I don't know, this is all a living experiment. I don't, I don't, I don't I, I'm an advocate. I don't have all the answers. I am not an expert. But I do like to ask the questions and and I'm I think I probably talk about it relentlessly with people in a way that they're sick of, but it matters, right? Our health really, really matters. I was talking to a colleague who um, was saying, you know, how do I heal when the trauma is still happening on a daily basis? Right? That is such a great question. How you can't heal, it's triage. So what is the triage that we need in our lives to get through, especially what's coming up in the next two weeks, right? Yeah. Right, like how do you get through that pressure that I don't know about you, but I feel it definitely, just that tension. How do, yeah. it's I not don't. a pedicure. <laughs> it's not, it's not. Girl, it is so much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> but also that next question is how you keep your spirit safe not just like mm. your, self, your spirit because I mean I, you you put something like what you just said is like you're we're, we're in triage right so and you're asking people for permission to be authentic and give this piece of yourself right and so in all of that, it is like, what is that? How are you going to make sure your spirit is safe? Because not all energy is great energy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was really fortunate on, uh, I guess it was Wednesday, yesterday evening, I was listening to Patrice Cullors speak. She was, it was through a, a UW Tacoma panel. And she was talking, uh, she was asked by one of the the UWT, I think, she, I think she was a student, and she said, I saw you in 2017, you came to Tacoma and you talked about how you're doing the work and your friends wanna see you, they gotta see you when you're doing the work, they gotta be in it with you. And um, I loved her response because she was like, oh, poor baby. Like, right, like poor 2017 Patrice because she was definitely burnt out, right? And she is, she talked about being in mental health counseling the last eight months, twice a week and cultivating joy. And, you know, that's what we have. Like, she's like, the work continues. It's, it's gonna be, we can trust that, right? As much as we're trying to, to, to fight a lot of the structural things that are happening, we can trust that it's, it's gonna be there. So what do we need to do to take care of ourselves so that we can continue? Because really the question is, if you're grinding so much now, are you going to be there in the future to enjoy it? Because the toll it's taking on your body is real, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's about giving yourself space and, and <laughs> maybe say no once in a while. Just try it. Let's experiment. Somebody, let's let's say, let's so somebody say, like, no. And maybe, exactly. and maybe we could get people to tell us how it went. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys don't. I really agree because um, I'll share something personal. So when we started this this thing, you know, the Better Way Black Collective, um, a lot of you guys don't know this, but I had, I was retired. So when I came into this, I was just like, this is a tremendous change. It's a tremendous time sacrifice. Like I have literally 
everything I want for me in my little corner and the way I'm able to mother my son. But at the same time, like, I just, there's so many other folks I got a mother. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I can't like literally, regardless of my opinion about why people were out there, I was drawn to stay up at night and watch the protests. Like, you know, when I should be asleep, right? Because I got to be up 8 a.m., got a call, but I'm watching it at 4 a.m. Because, like, what can I do? Like, I can't go out there because I have a two-year-old and I'm a single mom. So I can't depend and just get caught up in certain things, like, because that little boy is depending on me. Yeah. But I completely support people doing what they need to do to get their voices heard in peaceful matters, in, in peaceful ways, rather. But like, where's their peace in that? Because, I mean, I wasn't sleeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Right. Like you're not. And like, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so then how like, do you give I, yourself... I'm scared to go to the nail shop. Yeah. I'm scared to go to the salon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And. I mean, online shopping just does not do it for me. Like the beep, 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 beep at the register. Ladies, <laughs> come on, let's just be real. That online cart does not just make it do what it do. Like just pull it on that little pair of $500 boots and then going to the 200, whatever's in your budget. But I'm saying you can use green with that fancy leather. Like, you know, the things that we thought were important to our self-care, it's really been challenged. I mean, you know, it's funny, he got ah, right? But, but is it? Like I was having a conversation about the fact that um, in my friend circle, like several years ago, before I moved to Federal Way, we had a joke uh, that we were the real housewives of Renton. And that meant like, you know, like, you know, we see the shows, but I mean, it was serious. Like we're a crew, we care about each other. We will go through stuff. We gonna fight through it, right? And like, we care about each other, but a ton of what I thought was self-care was dependent on being a consumer, which mm -hmm. has absolutely nothing to do with me. It ain't healing me. I'm not feeling better. Like after I buy it, the only thing that has changed is my bank account balance. My heart is not healed. Like my anxiety is not gone. Um, ain't nothing changed. Yeah. So yeah, that's my little, whatever. Go back to teaching me. <laughs> no, I think that you bring up such a good point that, right, like we get, it, it, I think we started by talking about how one approach is the first step is awareness. And what you just talked about was awareness of distraction, right? How shopping is an amazing distraction, right? The, the, the fun that we get. But I from just have to be clear, as soon as I can go back to the mall, it will <laughs> being a very important fixture so we're not going to tear down things too much. okay all right i'll leave i will leave that alone replacement measure. help me cope don't, yeah. don't tear down the fundamentals okay <laughs> all right it, hey it looks different for everyone that is my motto right you start where you start i don't know i don't know i think it has to be about self-exploration and once you have that awareness it's it's about being willing to try and being willing to try in a, in a new way because of what we've been going through, right? We've all been in the house. So what are you doing in your house to take care of yourself, right? It definitely, it's been interesting for me to, to I've gone back to things that, that were soothing to me as a youngster, right? I've been doing art. I've been doing yoga. I've been creating things and reading things. Um, in a way that I ha hadn't before because I had to slow down, right? I didn't, I didn't have that capacity to go out into the world because I was scared, right? You mentioned that. But, but also what you talked about was being up at four in the morning watching protests. Mm -hmm. And not that we shouldn't be aware of what's happening in our world, but maybe is there a way to put limits around it so that it's not building up in our systems that inflammation you know, again. Was, there was that Netflix special right the the social experiment mm -hmm. and so that made me really think about how programmed I am to how I even consider what's restful because mm -hmm. like 
they're literally developing apps to train me to think that it's restful to scroll at night. But like, if I'm up at four in the morning, it's clearly not restful. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not, especially with a two-year-old who's going to keep you awake all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I think that, yeah. And, and also there's that piece of like, I work, my day job is something that can be very intense and I'm, I'm constantly saying, okay, the world does not revolve around you. You are not the only one that can solve this problem, right? Mm -hmm. So, so reminding ourselves that, that we don't have to be strong all the time, that we don't have to have all the answers, that yes, contributing in your community is, is really important and we're not the only ones doing it and that we can rely on each other to support each other and taking rest and taking vacations, right? Even if it's a staycation right now. I, I that, think that, oh, I'll go Lindsay, ahead. I was gonna ask, like, can you teach me some things? Cause we also share, right? Like we deal with things where I like to use what's called like the spoon theory, but like, what is the COVID spoon theory? COVID spoon theory, I don't know. Tell me. Oh, the okay. Do you guys is. know about the spoon theory? Oh, no. Okay. So I have fibromyalgia. And so right. that means like, look, my energy is just what it is. And we just don't have to deal with that. So if you have 10 spoons, right? Like all you have is these 10 spoons. Mm -hmm. Once they're gone, whether it's doing laundry, washing dishes, chasing the kids, um, making phone calls, um, mm -hmm. cooking meals. See how my fingers are going down? When those fingers... It's gone. Okay. So I suggest you appropriately ration your spoons. So while I'm you're wasting your that. energy trying to keep up with the Joneses or whoever, you need to be careful of the fact that you are running out of your own personal body, mental, your energies spoons. Like yeah. there's just that many. That's oh, so and so I mastered now. that like on a regular life level. The hell. That's great. Oh, I take spoons. naps to get spoons back. <laughs> <laughs> took one tonight before we got here. <laughs> See, that's what we need. Okay, so more nap. Let's keep going. I like that one. So yeah, yeah. In the beginning of COVID, it was more alcohol and, and lots of uh, fast food because I was an, an essential worker. Um, but I think since I'm COVID has like chilled and I'm still an essential worker, but I'm, I'm still- Wait, wait, I'm sorry, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. COVID has not chilled, it is not going anywhere, and we need you to stay home and stay safe and stay masked up. Well, I'm talking about in my, with my personal self, I'm talking, I'm not talking about COVID, COVID, I'm talking about my essential worker life. Let me clarify that. Um, I am an essential worker. I've worked in a, in a shelter this whole time, along with being a case manager, along with work, working with the Black Collective. So when I talk about chilling my life, it means like I'm not working at the shelter anymore. I'm more home. And um, so what that also now looks like is when it gets to be too much, something that we need to, I, I stress this every time I talk to people is therapy. If you don't have a therapist, I suggest you look for a therapist. If you don't want to look for a therapist, don't use your girlfriend or your, your, your friends as your therapist because you need a real therapist. Because yes, it's nice to have someone to talk to, but if they do not have the capacity to talk to you about it, then you need to find somebody who has the capacity and the skills to walk you through the COVID and stress and depression and anxiety and all of the things that come along with being in your house all the time. And I would say that even if you are someone whose squad is well-resourced, so say you are friends with a therapist, please don't do that to them. Please seek out someone that can truly advocate for you in that way and be mindful of the fact that they're also trapped in their home. So that additional labor is a lot. Yes. Yes. And so if you need resources to be connected, whether you have insurance or not, please reach out to fwblackcollective.com or our Facebook page and we can connect you with some resources to help you um, power map how to address that. But let's please be mindful because everybody's at home mm. like the world as we know it has changed and like emily and Lindsay, you guys have made great points our world like i just said our world has changed 
but like what you're accessing, how you access things, like the people that you know, the resources you know, they've all changed. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a little grace when you're navigating those things. There is, there are a lot of therapists right now who are supporting um, individuals at a very sliding scale, especially um, people of color and black individuals Definitely. Um, because of all the trauma that we are experiencing every day by um, our looking at it at Facebook or Instagram or all of these things. So, you know, that I just want to put that out there right now. It is a great time to ask for support, um, even at your job. Because right now, yes, job your employee is- assistance program, EAP. Yeah. Yes. And I want to highlight the fact that um, as we're looking at elections, we do not endorse candidates, nor do we en- endorse initiatives. But it, if it is important to you to expand access to mental health services, I would suggest that you review, if you live in King County, the King County Charter Amendments. They are discussing funding for how you can access those services. So review that when you're thinking about how you vote there, because this is how everything ties in, you guys. Like the things that we want, the things that we feel disadvantaged, like the the walls, like let's just call it what it is. The man, that's where it is. And it's like, this is not proverbial. Like there, there's, there's a way to get there. Mm-hmm. And there are avenues and it may take a, it's going to take us coming together in culturally relevant ways, which is something like this. Like we get together, we talk, like we have conversations with each other. When I was growing up, I said it earlier and I'm going to say it again. I was really taught this narrative of don't talk about religion, politics, and your pay. And I swear it has screwed us. Like, talk to your friends. Like, not just about the fun stuff. But if these people care about you, then, like, you should figure out and understand why they think the way they do. And people you don't really know, like your coworkers, try to understand their viewpoints. Like, limiting the information that comes in, but giving a free for all with social media, people we don't even know to influence our opinions just really doesn't make sense. When we're talking about self-care, like those outside uh, audiences, we're just letting them in like with no regard for the fact that they don't know us and they don't care about us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the people that love us the most are right here in our communities. Yeah. Having those good the boundaries, right? It's not just about saying no, but it's about saying you don't get access to me like that, right? Uh, And I also, I appreciate what you're saying about how we can take care of ourselves through legislation, right? How we vote. And we can also take care about how we advocate for ourselves. And if you don't know how to advocate for yourself within the healthcare system, there are there are ways that you can do that. The simple, you know, simple way is just don't give up. Keep talking to people until somebody actually listens to you, right? Unfortunately, often that means paying more, right? Your copay every single time you have to get another doctor that says, well, I'm not really sure, let's try this, <laughs> right? Even if it doesn't work. Um, you can tell people, sorry, I made some notes because I wanted to make sure that I, I so if somebody denies you care, you can always say, would you mind putting that in my chart that you're denying me this test? You're denying me this access to treatment, right? Um, and if you're- Emily, can you unpack that, please? What does that mean? Like, cause I want you to go back. Like, why would you be in that situation? Yeah, so sometimes because of, this is my, you know, I'm not an expert on this, but my basic understanding is how somebody maybe thinks they have something, but the doctor isn't convinced or they don't believe the symptoms or they think, well, we've done all of this and and it's not working. So we're not going to try again. Then I think it's, you know, they put their notes in the file, but they don't put your voice in the file. And I think it's important for your voice to be there so that you're showing up. And when medical records are reviewed, it's clear that the doctor re- re- denied that treatment, right? Yes, I also want to say that there's a reason why our legislators and 
like best practices, even if you're talking about just medical professionals, there's a reason why we have electronic medical records. So if you are going to a provider that utilizes my chart, put it in your record. Don't just call them, send them a message where there's a written record that says, I need a provider with X, Y, Z. I need help with this. I'm missing this. My insurance is this. That is a record. So that if you have issues later or things, even with your insurance provider, if you're looking at their website and you're trying to find a partnership, um, one thing I noticed is that if you have Apple Care, a ton of those um, insurance providers also have, offer case management. So if you're looking to connect with a provider, you literally could call them and it's not just like that list online. You could really get like, hey, I'm looking like for someone with a specialty in this, also does like this, like you'll have a person to interpret those web results. There's a ton of things that we're not aware of. And um, that's why I like to be here every Thursday with you guys. But I, I went off track there, Emily, please. Sorry. No, you're, you're totally right on track. Um, and I often think about, sometimes you get to see the doctor for like seven minutes, mm -hmm. right? Which is not a sufficient time to really learn, especially if you've just been given a significant diagnosis, right? That's not enough time to do, you know, get the education you need. And so remembering to ask, there are a lot of services that healthcare providers provide that may not be obvious. And so asking, is there a patient advocate that can tell me about this? Are there classes, are there workshops so that you can learn more? And like I said, just keep asking until you get what you need, even though that can in itself can be exhausting and tiring. Yeah. Right. That's, I mean, I really appreciate you even just going in depth about what it looks like, um, especially with, about advocating for your, for your health in that. And that is part of self-care, right? Um, your health is self-care, sleep is self-care, mental capacity is self-care. Um, I think the question it is, is like you, you say that you do, um, you, you do yoga and you um, started what made you start on this, this journey of getting your master's and what you, you did, first of all, and then how do you see yourself showing up in the world? Oh, that's a good question. I think it, it was because of my day job and I felt inadequate was, was really the first reason why I decided to go get my master's. The second reason was because I also have some health challenges that I wanted to learn more about and and, and understand my own body better. Um, those are two really good reasons. And I wanted, I think that what I'm interested in is how do you help people build a meaningful life, right? How do, and, and a meaningful life is health. It is wellness in a lot of different ways, whether that's physically, mentally, financially, socially, right? About community, that, that full spectrum of what it means to have a full thriving, flourishing life. Not just about survival, right? Because we all know how to get by. But really, how do you build something that fills you up with joy? Because don't we, sh shouldn't we have access to joy? Why is that, why is that not like a given? Why, you know how some, so many people are suffering? Like there's, mm -hmm. why can't we learn how to cultivate joy? And I'm, and I'm not judging because I've been at the uh, Olympian at suffering, right? Really good at it. <laughs> but are you um, joy? I'm sorry, what? You said, but are you good at joy? Joy, I'm learning to cultivate it, right? That it is a choice, right? That I can find, I'm really good at silver lining for other people. Yes. <laughs> I excel at that. Um, so learning how to do it for myself and bring delight into my day, looking for the little bits of magic that happen, right? That inspire me. I do that a lot. Um, and I, like I said before, I am not an expert in this. I'm an advocate for it because I, I believe that I'm, I'm, I think it's a spectrum and that I'm on this journey towards it. I don't know, I don't know if I'll ever fully get there, um, but I'm, I'm certainly willing to try. And, and, you know, I struggle with depression. So some days it's easier to try than others, right? But I keep going because I do believe that even getting a sliver closer matters. Mm -hmm. right? Every little bit matters. And I guess that's the, the thing that I 
I hope to leave this conversation with is just that Black women's lives really do matter, right? And it's it's not it's not just the 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 Breonna Taylors, right? It's the it's the every single little day moments that are building that inflammation within your body, that are taking a toll on your overall wellness, that that mean that Black women die earlier than white women, right? Shouldn't we all have access to higher levels of health? Don't we? And yes, systemically, there are a lot of reasons why that happens, but is there a way to cultivate it in our lives? Just little bits trying now. You know, maybe it's eating a bowl full of greens because that is a lot of magnesium and that helps, right? Your brain health, right? Maybe it's taking a walk and getting some fresh air, even if it's just five minutes around the building. Right? It's little things that we can do to help change that, those flames within our bodies. So I would encourage everyone to support each other and check in with each other. Like, how are you taking care of yourself? And is there anything I can do to support you? Right? Not taking it on, but encouraging, right? If that makes sense. I know you said earlier that, you know, Black women are created, you know, to be that strong superwoman type. And it, and it has started back um, slavery we were we were you know having children in a field two days later not even two days later to be honest like and we're we're nursing you know master's baby where we're nursing our own but we can't use the same breasts and you know we're trying to carry the family to make sure that they're okay we're watching our children get sold and we and you know as we've gotten older and then you know we're watching um you know our husbands get murdered and and we're still marching and we're still asking for the same type of equity that most other races have. And we keep doing these things and we, you know, it does biologically change our whole system. Like we will keep watching trauma and trauma and trauma. Um, but think, we, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I think a lot about the father of gynecology Right, this Dr. Sims guy who built an entire field of medicine on the backs of women, black women's bodies. Mm. Right. Didn't didn't give him anesthesia. The the phys or the the student doctors had to leave the room because they were so disgusted. And right, so the, the black women had to hold each other down to endure the pain that he inflicted on them. And a field of medicine was built on that. Yes. Right. So that is what black women have endured right and 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 while that is horrifying to me and painful i also think about the resilience of black women mm -hmm. the strength of black women the heart of black women right the beautiful capacity to survive all that that is within us yeah. so we get to embody that we get to choose that right so yes, there was enormous amounts of suffering. And yes, there's also enormous amounts of creativity and survival that have come from all of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying to diminish the pain, but also we can we learn from what gifts we were given through that resilience? That's beautiful. I, I absolutely think that you can grow and learn and build off of things from the past, you know? Um, and, and well, as we're talking about self-care and what that looks like, and even talking about some of the things that are not self-care, right? It is, it is a point of where we give ourselves permission to do it without asking for permission. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Permission to do it, right? Yeah. And if you yes. need like a permission slip and nobody will give you one, <laughs> ask me because I will write you one. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, I believe that um, asking for permission is no longer a necessity. We don't need to ask for permission. No, we don't, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we do. And, and one thing that um, I am giving my, my fellow sisters uh, the permission to do is love yourself enough to give yourself permission to take care of your own self. Mm. Because no one is going to say, yo, don't, hey, I got the kids today, self-care, and then you know, that might happen in some lives, but not all lives. And, or your job is not, is not going to come to you with like, sis, you know, you could take the day off and go, go have fun. You've got to give yourself permission. I'm calling out today. 
I have PTO. We we don't use our PTO. hundreds of hours. <laughs> At some point, I need to use. It. Come on, sis. We got this. <laughs> I'm yeah. waiting to send someone. Well, not right now, not in COVID. But I can't. Everybody's depending upon me. <laughs> okay. But um, once upon a time, you know, before COVID, go lay in the sun, you know, oh do something for yourself that take where you take care of yourself. You have yeah. to. Because if you don't, we're just gonna be. Mm, okay, so let's just put this out that everyone who gets to hear this one day does one thing for themselves in the next 24 hours. Just yeah. one small thing to take care of yourself and celebrate the unique, wonderful unicorn that you are, right? Right. Yeah. I think so. So now that we're talking about this, and so what is one thing that you are going to do for yourself? I don't want to say today because it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> what, what small thing did you do for yourself today? And what are you going to do for yourself tomorrow? Mm hmm well, I, I think I mentioned it earlier. I did take a nap because um, mm -hmm. if I had not, you would not have the same conversation. <laughs> conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I left work and I was like committed. I am taking a nap. That is, a, and it was definitely restorative. So highly mm -hmm. encourage people to do those. And in the next 24 hours, I, um, so our environment really matters. And I'm, mm -hmm. I am taking some time to cherish my environment so that I can create a space that I get to be nourished by over the weekend instead of just dealing with the chaos that I've created because of the last week. <laughs> Grad school and work, I tell you, I really, there's no time for things. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So, Ms. Lynn, I want to ask you the same thing. What is one small thing you did for yourself and what are you going to do for self-care tomorrow? You want like a commitment? <laughs> okay. So, you said one thing I did for myself or I'm just going to do for myself? No, one small thing you did for yourself today or are going to do today. Because it's 10 o'clock, so we still got like two hours. And what are you going to be vulnerable today? So I'm going to be very, very vulnerable with you guys. You know, it's rough being in the house all the time, especially with just me and my toddler. So I had to prioritize because there was so many things going on today. Mm -hmm. Dropping my son off just so I could take a shower. Oh, Beautiful. So that was so good today. That's so great. Okay. And then I'll give you guys a bonus because the other day when I was filling out my ballot I lit a candle I need Ooh. good energy because okay. this is a oh Jesus Lord. <laughs> oh. I whoa man it's a lot this okay. is like my civic duty good lord yeah I just need some mm -hmm. so that, and then like tomorrow after all these tips mm, Okay, so tomorrow, because my mom watches my son on Thursday night for Thursday Thoughts, I am going to get up and, like, go for a walk to go get tea. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, on my way before I go pick him up in the morning, you know, I'll go get some exercise, get something for me, and, yeah. Awesome. So you have to text that, somebody so that too. we, yeah. But I'll be text... full disclosure, that's on my schedule every Friday, except for the walking part. Yeah, you have to text, maybe text Lindsay so that she can celebrate your success in that, yeah. right? Like we have to support each other. Oh, so now you're trying to, oh, look at you. Oh, y'all know I'm going to look at you. So y'all trying to get a commitment. It's on Facebook. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, yes, I will text Lindsay in the morning when I'm done. Or well, while I'm so doing it. So she can okay. celebrate you, right? We don't yeah. celebrate each other's success very much or yeah. often enough, right? So that's okay, Lindsay. So what can I text? Uh, what can I expect in my text back? Okay, Emily, so come on. Why can't we just start a group chat? You owe me have your number? That's good. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Put me in there, um, Lindsay. <laughs> what did I do today? That was self care. Ah, I didn't. I'll be honest. It, I still got two hours. I haven't even eaten today besides some popcorn. Okay, well, like, first things first, friend. 
Uh uh-uh, uh, no, no, no. And I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna give you the auntie look, the mama look, the best friend look. The don't you lucky you live about 40 minutes from me. Mm. Yes. So listen, I got to man. As all for every black woman that says that they're too busy, but you openly acknowledge that you have health concerns, I'm gonna whoop you. Yeah. I agree. We need you. I'm not gonna lie. And it's I that serious. But some of these I things are my basic table. things, and you just need an accountability partner. So yeah. let me gather you, because you know when I be catching you out and you look tired, I'm like, eh, go home, friend. Love you. <laughs> and I am <laughs> the same when I'm tired. Yeah. I get it. I'm open about like my limitations, so I fully expect my friends to be like, yo, we need you. And let me just tell you. If when you see me tired, you don't think that you're not my friend, okay? Mm, and we could yeah. just, just you know that. Just yeah. let me know that. Because I said yeah. it out loud, so it's real. Yeah. <laughs> so so give I me think, that respect, because I've been yeah. honest about my journey. Mm-hmm. And so one thing that I am going to do is I am going to turn off my computer. I don't do that very often. And there's no work phone near my bed tonight. I am going to just eat some dinner after this and just be Lindsay for a little bit because I've been working a lot this week um and tomorrow listen after all of my meetings I'm gonna light some candles I'm gonna turn on my fireplace I'm gonna turn on my little jazz like I'm about to go on a date but there's no boo in my house because I don't have a boo and (laughs) I'm going to write not right for my blog, oh my not right for anybody. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Lindsay, I need you to drop in the Facebook chat your blog mm. because once you finish writing as your current, me and Emily, accountability partner, we expect there to be a post sometime <laughs> soon. Oh, you guys, so my blog drops actually January 1, 2021. Oh, so my so website is going to be finished being built. So we're almost ready to draw. Can you share? What should they be looking out for? Is there a public name? So yes. So it's called Soul Searching in a Body You Hate. Um, I actually started writing for evancook.com about two years ago. And it's about generational trauma within my own self. And as I'm healing my own self, I'm healing my ancestors. And so when when I talk about um, generational trauma and about self-care and about all of these aspects that you know, I'm, I might share with you guys, I'm actually like living this on a daily basis. I'm, I'm working hard to heal myself. So that way, when I do have children, I don't pass on what has been passed down to me for generations. Like things I that I, I'm, I'm Atlanta for a commitment to go huh? get a pedicure tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Edwina, for making a commitment with us no, to go yes. do something kind to yourself. Yay. Yes. I love this. Come on, girl. Like I said, you, what else can I mean, we be happy? What else we yeah. commit? To? Well, no, <laughs> we got to. I can't commit until after you know anything else. Give me one day at a time. You know that is perfect. <laughs> perfect, right? And this is how through community. This is what's so special about us, right? That sisterhood that we really can encourage each other yes. into wellness, mm-hmm. right? Beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. I love how, like, I don't know. I feel like even though we're like a little bit more alone, I still feel like my circles expanded in different ways because I've learned to tap into different things, different communities. Like I never thought of myself as a gardener, but I have a whole urban garden thing going on on my porch. Yes. And you know, there's like different groups I've joined Me on too. Facebook. I, I watch that. like my little ratchet shows on Facebook, and there's like groups on Facebook. So it's like yeah. I'm not promoting Facebook. I'm just saying like. YouTube, different things, like, you can look at all these different platforms, like, there's no reason to not find something that brings you joy, even if it's not, like, an actual activity. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that example. I, too, I tried to garden. I, I oh, wanted no, to I suck garden. at gardening. Like, I, I wanted to fail at it. I wanted to do it, so because I'm always trying to, to, like, do everything perfect, and I was like, you just, doesn't, just try, just try, right? It's been and amazing. I mean, even if it dies, you know, just get a little bit more dough. Exactly. Dirt, a little bit more seed, you know. I have you seeds, know? extra seeds. <laughs> exactly. Right, because it's like a whole pack. So, you know, just it's only like a few per thing. So you just, you just try it again. 
Like, okay. <laughs> okay, green thumbs. That is not me. I, 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 I don't even know yet, but I'm gonna be real. Like, food insecurity is real. Yeah. I need us to all have like a basic understanding of gardening, because like I, I know you. now how much I do not know, and that scares me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I understand gardening. I get it. I'm allergic to life, like trees, pollen, like. <laughs> you know, grass, you know, the basic things that like, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to go in the garden. I'm like, oh, it makes me sick. I'm going to stay okay, in the well, house. You're going to have to go to the Black Collective Farmer's Market. As mm-hmm. some of you don't really know, well, most of you probably don't know, we do have a farm um, in partnership with a family mm-hmm. farm. So actually last weekend we had a youth event where they went out there and planted garlic in partnership with mm-hmm. the Pacific Islander Association and Josephia. Um, I'm really excited about our partnership with them, but like that return to the land, that yes. touch the dirt, all that, like so it important. gives you the feels, but it's also like such a tremendous opportunity for learning. Yeah. Like, first of all, I want to shout out our program manager, Johanna. She was yeah. out there and she was getting the youth like connected. They were in the dirt and I was like in Zoom meetings still and I'm getting updates with the pictures like those kids were out there and I can't wait to see what we do after the winter when it warms back up. Yes, I might hang out with you guys in a chair far away from the dirt, but I'll still be there. Hey, we got 20 acres. Well, they do have like one, but hey, go farm. That's awesome. Really excited. So, wonderful. so wonderful. I really and wanted to. Picking uh, collard greens, that that in itself. Come on, ladies. You mm. don't care. No, you can pick and I'll, I'll cook it. That, hey, I'll partnership. Cook, bro, when I came back <laughs> to the farm, I made, I stayed up till like two in the morning when them greens was done, baby. I have never, ever. And I know that I hooked it up. Lindsay, you've had my cooking. Like, I don't play. I, I like that food. right there. It's, it's the ingredient. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You just really had my love before. But mm. then I had fresh <laughs> ingredients. I didn't even know they had 20 different kinds of collard greens. And that's just on the farm. We got a farm at Boom. Wow. Stop. Girl, so, who knew? Listen, so I might have to. <laughs> Do something, take a Benadryl, go to sleep after. I don't know. But uh, uh, we might have to make that happen. Yeah. I, I really My new appreciate. mall is literally like our farm. I'm about to go through and pick me some farmer's market vegetables. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Go shopping. And form a self-care. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. In nature, all socially distanced and whatnot. <laughs> I appreciate you, Miss Emily. You oh, are you're so welcome. And I love you. And I appreciate you to listen. And so I'm, I, I don't know if I've said this multiple times. If you guys have heard me talk about Miss Emily, I tell her I need you to do something. She's like, she gives me that look like, uh, I don't know. But she always says yes. And so, and I promise you all of my friends, they be looking at me crazy, but they show up and they show out every single time. And so I want to, I appreciate her for, for saying yes and to give us knowledge on, on what she's learned while she's in school. Um, and also, you know, joining in the conversation of self-care, um, especially because, you know, we don't talk about that that often, but I think, you know what, once a quarter, I'm about to just, we're just going to have a conversation about self-care. <laughs> what do we do? Why and not? you know what? Why not? And, and, yeah. and, and talking about it as a way of, as normalizing what self-care is. Yes. We're going to start simple, normalizing. Right? It. Right? I love that. And I'll just, I have two things. If you're, it's okay for me to share. Yeah, One no, is no um, season, seasonal affective disorder is coming, right? This is dark time. So just remember that that's part of your self-care is get access to as much light as you can, right? Reach out to people. There are lamps. If you can, they're, afford them they've got light bulbs things like that just to be mindful that that's the season we're heading into also this holiday season where everybody gets stressed out it's gonna be even weirder now that we're in covid Mm -hmm. and the other thing just because i know i've been watching the federal way black collective and all your posts i just want to remind everybody that 
if you are formerly incarcerated in the state of Washington and no longer under the supervision of the Department of Corrections, you are eligible to register to vote. And uh, in per I think it's online and applications, the deadline is the 26th and you can do mm -hmm. register in person until the third. So just putting that out. In or online. And yes, you can register online, and online until the 26th. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So just thank you for letting me get that out there. Of course. Um, let me think. Uh, on so the we have a community. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. On the 24th, we have the ASQ training. Um, I'll be honest, you guys, I heard today that we are at a wait list. So first of all, thank you so much, community. We are super excited. This is our first training. That is like so dope. There's literally like over 50 child care centers signed up to receive or participate. So we're very, very, very excited. Um, <clears throat> of course, we'll have more opportunities. There'll be other webinar opportunities and we'll be able to offer other things. If you are a child care center, first and foremost, please know that the deadline is Friday for grant assistance for reimbursement for expenses you had due to COVID-19. It is so key that we maintain the child care centers that we have. Even if you're in an in-home facility, if you're licensed and have a business license, even if you don't, if you are a licensed with the state, please contact the city of Federal Way or you can email us and we can connect you directly so that you can apply for that funding. Like $15,000 is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I think that's really the difference between a lot of businesses closing and opening. And um, today is the 22nd. So this is the last episode of Thursday Thoughts for us to share that if you have not heard from our blast, our post, our page, like we have been offering small business technical assistance in partnership with the Department of Commerce with the state of Washington and the Kent Chamber. So if you are a disadvantaged business, Due to COVID, there is funds up to $10,000 that we can help you apply for. If you're unsure, if you don't know, if you think, or your mama might, please apply. Like seriously, don't just think it doesn't count for you. Because like for real, that's why they asked us. Like it's for you. Like seriously, that's literally the point. Please reach out, let us help you. There's not even just that. There's several business toolkits, like videos, like the chamber has a dope video YouTube list of ways that you can pivot online, like learning systems, accounting systems, like these are amazing opportunities. And I don't know what else to tell you, but tap in <laughs> um, on that opportunity though, as far as with the Department of Commerce, it closes in six days. So please reach out as soon as possible because those applications do take time to complete. What am I missing, Lindsay? So we have community meeting October 27th. And so I need you guys to come up, show up, show out. And it is going to be from eight to nine. And if you have not sent me an email about our name change for the men's group and the women's group, I need you to email me. I need a name. I need you guys to give me a name. I don't want to pick a name. I need you, the community, to actually tell me what you want. So if you okay, have, Lindsay, what what are these groups about? So what are we about to do in there? So the men's group and the women's group, we are going to just have a time to develop relationships with each other, and also I will be bringing speakers in to talk about um, sexual health, mental health. I actually have this dope idea; it's called Mental Health Monday. So I'll have someone um, every Monday that's committing to at least 30 to 45 minutes. And we're gonna just, we're gonna vibe about mental health. Cause I think that's very, very important. Um, and it's gonna be a male and a female. So and there are times where it's just gonna be specific for um, per gender um, in whatever identity you, you identify with. And so also- and what about um, my favorite I, thing? You know, I'm gonna be a little selfish y'all. Are you a parent? Co-parenting strategies. Yes. I was getting to that one next play. I'm sorry, I'm getting there. <laughs> and That's so what I want to do. Talk, yes, we're going to talk about co-parenting and also really diving into positive relationships. And that could be with your children, with your partner, with whoever that looks like. So it really is it's a way to tap into community. It's a way to tap into me 
in my resources. It's a way to tap into our case manager. It's a way to tap into the Federal Black Collective. So I need a name for the women. I need a name for the men. Please don't make me pick it because I don't want to speak for you guys. I need you guys to speak to me so I can say that. And it will be announced on Thursday Thoughts. I'm going to give you a shout out, say so-and-so. Thank you. I appreciate this name. Um, you, this one was chosen. And I'm going to have Lynn help me with the, whatever has been sent out. I'm going to keep passing out the flyer. We're going to keep sharing the flyer. I need you guys. To oh, and that means we get to put out like new logos. Like shout out all the way friends all the way and i and again i always appreciate you guys for tapping into thursday thoughts giving me and lynn your support and your love and your blessings and you know your your vibes and your spirits as we go through and what with that whatever topic we have for that week so i i always want to thank you guys because without your love we wouldn't want to like come in and, and share our space because you guys make us come on every Thursday. You guys are energy. So thank you so much. I appreciate you guys and thank you guys. We will see you again next Thursday and it's going to be amazing. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.